Hi guys, my name is Light and I come to light up your world. Hi! In this video, I will explain about what is Kirchhoff Law, what is Kirchhoff Voltage Law, how to apply Kirchhoff Voltage Law in calculation, and how does Kirchhoff Voltage Law works in the circuit. Now, let's get started! So, what is Kirchhoff Law? In 1847, a German physicist Gustav Robert Kirchhoff had introduced the Kirchhoff Law. Kirchhoff Law are formerly two laws known as Kirchhoff Current Law KCL, and Kirchhoff Voltage Law KVL. Kirchhoff two law are more sufficient and powerful tools for analyzing a large variety of electrical circuit. So, in this video, we are mainly discuss about Kirchhoff Voltage Law. The Kirchhoff Voltage Law is also called as Kirchhoff Second Law. Kirchhoff Voltage Law KVL states that the algebraic sum of all voltages around a closed path or loop is zero. This is the mathematical form on how to calculate the total voltages around a loop and must be equal to zero. M is the number of voltages in the loop. Vm is the MTH voltage. This is the example of a circuit. We can see there are V1, V2, V3, and also V4. We can write a mathematical form. The sum of all the voltages around a loop is equal to zero. V1 plus V2 plus V3 plus V4 equal to zero. So if you understand about what is KVL, now let's learn how to apply KVL in a certain problem. This is the basic concept that you must understand and how to answer this kind of question. Note that usually the arrows can be any direction, which is clockwise or anti-clockwise. The direction also represents the direction of the voltage. Another thing that you must take note, if direction of error enter a positive terminal, then voltage will be positive. And if direction of error enter negative terminal, then voltage will be negative. Now, let's put the error. Akio error. After we get the direction for each loop, we can apply KCL at node A. The equation at node A is I1 equals to I2 plus I3. We arrange back the equation, we get I1 minus I2 minus I3 equal to 0. Next, we can apply KVL to each loop one by one and we'll get corresponding equations. From the diagram, V1 equal to 20I1, V2 equal to 50I2, V3 equal to 10I3. At loop 1, negative 10 plus V1 plus V3 equal to 0. So we can substitute back the value of V1 and V3. So we get 20I1 plus 10I3 equal to 10. That is our second equation. Meanwhile, at loop 2, negative V3 plus V2 plus 5 equal to 0. Substitute the value of V3 and V2. So we get negative 10I3 plus 50I2 plus 5 equal to 0. Rearrange back the equation, so we have our third equation. 50I2 plus 5 equal to 10I3. So, the last step of KVL, we can find I1, I2, and I3 by using the three equations. From these equations, we can get I1 equal to 0.23A, I2 equal to negative 0.04A, and I3 equal to 0.27A. We can obtain the value of V by substituting the current value into the equation below. V1 equals to 20I1. So substitute I1, we get 4.6 volt. V2 equals to 50I2. Substitute the value of I2 and we get negative 2 volt. 
V3 equals to 10 I3, we substitute the value of I3, we can get 2.7 volt. Quite easy, right? So I bet all of us can master this kind of questions. So, in conclusion, KVL is known as Law of Conservation of Voltage. This is very useful when dealing with serious circle. In KVL, we ignore the motion in the other directions because only the high difference matters. Sum of the voltage drops equal to sum of voltage rises. So, KVL can apply in... Last not least, application of KVL in daily life. Firstly, kickoff laws are used to measure the understanding such as current voltage, also the direction of moving current in the circuit. Second, this rule is applicable to every circuit but it is very fruitful to solve complicated circuitries. Third, this law also helps us to observe the transfer of power in the circuit. Fourth, the current distribution in various branches of a circuit can easily be found out by applying KCL at different nodes or junction points in the circuit. Lastly, after the KVL is applied, each possible loop in the circuit generates a algebraic equation for every loop. Like this time. 